11 Facts About the End of the Great War My fascination with World War I grew when my father told me that his dad served in the Marines from 1917-1918. My other grandfather and my wife's grandfather served in World War II, but my dad's grandfather was in the First War. My grandpa was a trained sniper, but was never sent to France and was discharged after the armistice. Listed below are 11 fascinating facts about the people and events of the most destructive and bloody war in human history, until World War II, of course, which ended at 11 a.m. on the 11th of November 1918. 11. Journey to Armistice. The German delegates were not immediately taken to the railway car where the armistice talks would take place after crossing the lines on November 8. Rather, the French offered them a 10-hour, scenic tour, that displayed incredible damage to the French countryside after four years of war. The delegates were then ushered into a rail car in Campaign Forest to begin the three-day meeting. Following the announcement of Kaiser Wilhelm II's abdication on November 10, the German delegates received uncoded instructions from the General-in-Chief Hindenburg to accept whatever terms they could get, and to act fast, due to rioting and growing unrest at home. Only a small portion of the devastation in northern France can be seen in the picture. 10. Rare visual record. Just after 5 a.m. the Germans and Allies signed the armistice. Time in Paris. There is only one photograph of the signing, unlike, say, the surrender of France in 1940 or the surrender of Japan in 1945. The photo above appears to have been taken through a window. I believe that's Matthias Herzberger, the chief German negotiator. The other photo shows the Allied representatives shortly after the signing, Marshal Folk is second from right. 9. Armistice Rail Carriage and Site. Later, the rail carriage, car, and armistice spot were designated as national monuments. Hitler made the French surrender in that very train car almost 22 years later, in June 1940. The monument was dynamited before the Allies liberated France in 1944, and the carriage itself was destroyed the following year, to prevent a second German armistice or surrender being signed in the same vehicle. Here's how the site looks today, http colon slash slash pierre's western front dot punt dot nl slash question mark r equals 1 and id equals 435051. 8. 6 more hours. Just after 5 a.m. the armistice was signed. The morning of November 11, Paris time. At 11 a.m. the fighting was to officially end. A German delegation had requested a ceasefire immediately, but the Allies set a six-hour deadline to allow all commanders to get the message. Some commanders ordered their men to stand down after hearing the news. Couldn't you simply walk over a piece of ground a few hours later? Others, including some American commanders, continued to attack, seeing an opportunity for glory or promotion slipping away, or thinking that the Germans needed to be beaten. Both sides lost several thousand men in the final six hours of the war. The Commonwealth War Graves Commission recorded 863 British and Commonwealth deaths on November 11. In the picture, German troops are being attacked in the final weeks of the war. 7 future American president. As one artillery captain said, he fired at the Germans until just minutes before 11 a.m., because he believed the armistice was premature and the Germans needed to be truly beaten, not just defeated. What is his name? Harry S. Truman, Captain. 6. Beginning and ending at Mons. Mons was the site where the British Army began and ended the war. First British dead of the Great War were those killed at Mons in August 1914, when the five divisions of the BEF fought their first battle. On November 11, 1918, the British returned to Mons, and some of the last Commonwealth soldiers of the Great War died there. Scroll down to see a photo of the St. Symphorian Military Cemetery at Mons, where the graves of the first and last British soldiers killed at Mons are located. 5. No end for the wounded. Several men who were wounded on November 11 succumbed to their injuries after the 11th hour. Many more endured years of pain and suffering from physical wounds that never quite healed or couldn't be healed. A Commonwealth soldier named Thomas was gravely wounded on November 6, just before negotiations began, and he was still alive and conscious when the armistice took effect. His lower face was literally ripped away by whatever hit him in the face, his nose, mouth, and jaw. 
he miraculously survived. In August 1922, Thomas finally had something approaching a normal-looking face after years of reconstructive surgery. 4. Negotiator Assassinated Germany's lead negotiator at the armistice, Matthias Erzberger, initially supported the war until 1917. By then, the bloody and static lines in France had convinced him that Germany should negotiate a peace. Prince Max von Baden chose Erzberger to lead the negotiations since Erzberger was a civilian and opposed to the war. Erzberger joined the newly formed government after the fighting ended and endorsed the 1919 Treaty of Versailles, which many Germans held in contempt. In 1920, Erzberger was forced from office for his involvement in the stab in the back, see number two, and he was murdered in 1921. 3. The last men killed. Many, but not all, historians credit a German soldier by the name of Lieutenant Tomas with being the final German casualty. An American unit, apparently unaware of the ceasefire, shot him after the 11th hour. The identity of the last German killed before the 11th hour is unknown. According to generally accepted records, the last British, Canadian, French and American soldiers killed were, British soldier George Edwin Ellison died around 9.30 a.m. during a scouting trip around Mons. The French soldier Augustin Trebuchon was killed around 10.45 a.m. They spread the news that they would get hot soup after the 11th hour. Two minutes before the 11th hour, George Lawrence Price died just north of Mons. Henry Gunther, who was believed to be the last man killed in the Great War, died 60 seconds before the 11th hour. Gunther and the others were shouted at and waved at by German soldiers. Above is a photo of Gunther. 2. The Stab in the Back. The end of World War I and the origins of World War II are often characterized by mentions of the Stab in the Back, the idea that the German army had not been defeated but was betrayed by the civilian leadership. There was more to this than just Nazi propaganda, many Germans returning from France, Belgium, Romania, Italy, Russia, etc. actually believed it. Don't worry about the facts. Military leaders told the Kaiser that the army and navy would no longer support him, naval mutineers refused to fight anymore, the army high command had sought an armistice before Allied forces had hit German soil, and the home front was literally starving and rioting. Despite this, the legend of the stab in the back became a sort of holy writ. So, while the Nazis didn't create the stab in the back legend, they certainly exploited it to devastating effect. 1. Prophetic Predictions Both AEF Commander General Pershing and Allied Supreme Commander Folk of France were unhappy with the nature of the armistice and subsequent Versailles Peace Treaty. Pershing believed that it was a grave mistake to let the Germans simply lay down their arms without actually being beaten. They were defeated, yes, but not beaten. He correctly predicted that because they did not make the Germans beg for peace on their knees inside a ruined Germany, the Allies would soon be fighting them again. Folk was even more prescient. Upon reading the Versailles Treaty in 1919, Folk was heard exclaiming, this isn't a peace. It's a ceasefire for 20 years. 20 years and 2 months later, England and France declared war on Germany. Thanks for watching the video. Do share and subscribe to get updated.